the Oasis network is the basis of Oasis privacy layer. I mean, that's why it's called Oasis privacy layer. It's based on Oasis. So Oasis is a layer one scalability architecture that's unique in that it can provide trusted execution environments to smart contracts. And what this does is it gives privacy to the code and the state that is in your contract. So it does this using trusted execution environments. So you can think of a trusted execution environment as a locked box. You have a computer, it's in a locked room, and it has armed security guards outside the door. Not even the owner of the computer can see what's going on inside. So in fact, what this is, is a special chip essentially inside of your processor that encrypts everything going into and out of the processor and also provides the ability to tell the rest of the world using a cryptographic attestation that this is a very genuine trusted execution environment and that the software inside is correctly loaded and all that good stuff. All right, so we use trusted execution environments to enable the Oasis privacy layer, we'll get into that. But I want to know, let you know that as you build on the Oasis, we have this huge grants program, uh, big ecosystem, lots of different developers. So there's a lot of interoperability you can use. And that's one of the benefits of using trusted execution environments is that all these different apps can just port directly without too much difficulty. You don't have to learn new programming languages. Um, you just use Solidity and Hard Hat and it's all super fun. So once you're on the layer one o um, Oasis, Oasis Sapphire, you get all these nice things like high TPS scalability, but mainly privacy. Like that's what we're trying to offer you here today. So now we have that building block, which is the Oasis Sapphire layer one. And we're going to then turn that into a layer two. So we're gonna be providing privacy to your layer one dApps with minimal changes to your code. So this is gonna be useful for things like DAOs. And so you have secret ballot, you're gonna see that in just a bit. Uh, DID, things like keeping secrets on chain, proving uh, identity data, and then having that be interoperable on chain. So like Web3 D DID without the whole off chain in a synchronous component and gaming things like uh, randomized games of chance, like where you have like critical hits, um, rewards, lotteries, and then things like fog of war. And you can just easily code that up in solidity by just saying like require person has like access, like can view. And then if they do, they can return the data. So it's a very convenient way to add privacy to your games and build like web two games in web three. And of course, DeFi. So I like to say like, MEV resistant DeFi, you can't front run or send which what you can't see. So that's like one of those things that you can do if you have privacy. All right, so again, the benefits of Oasis uh, privacy layer that you, the private variables are actually private and you can use them for your layer one DAP. You can use the exact same tooling that you've been using for Ethereum, like Hardhat, MetaMask, I mean, Solidity, Viper, everything you've already know and love and all the many, many hours of developer experience put into that. And you get, of course, low fees, cool things like RNG for your games, um, encryption for like end-to-end -end encryption, and then it's just completely easy to use. So there's really no reason not to use it, except if you're layer one, if you already have a layer one DAP and it has tons of users and tons of TVL, and you just want to add privacy without moving people over. All right, so now let's bring in the privacy layer. So. The privacy layer is essentially you, you, you keep your DAP on your layer one, and then on the Oasis side, you have the rest of your contract doing the, the secret part. So you can think, of, if you're familiar with hardware enclaves like Intel SGX, that gives the untrusted host app this little confidential piece. The Oasis privacy layer is like an enclave for Web3. It's like an enclave for DAPs. So you can put the private state of your application on the Oasis side and use the Oasis privacy, Oasis privacy layer to bridge back and forth to give your DAP privacy without ever moving your DAP. And you can get started in this in under 15 minutes because of course it's, it's super easy to use. It's just Solidity and EVM and all that nice things. So here's a diagram of how it works. On the left side, you have the user and that's just your standard, your standard Web3 user. Now they're gonna not even know that Oasis even exists. So like what we're going for is that the, there's no change to the user experience. And we do that using uh, a message passing bridge, which you see on the right, and a gas relayer. The flow of a transaction is the user will submit some transaction on the home chain, which I call it Ethereum and interact with your layer one Ethereum DAP. They want to submit some things privately to the private side of your entire DAP, right? So what the user is going to do is pay using the gas tokens on that layer one chain, so they don't even need to have the Oasis gas token, and then submit their transaction through the gas relayer. Like MetaMask is just gonna pop up like one little box, say sign message, not even sign transaction, just sign message. And then they're gonna hit sign, not change networks, just sign, and that will get submitted through the gas relayer to Sapphire, Oasis Sapphire, where it will then process it with end-to-end -end confidentiality. 
And then at some time later, when you want the results back on your layer one DAP, Sapphire will send a message back over this message passing bridge to your layer one DAP where you can do things like unlock tokens, create contracts, or, or modify settings of the DAO, doing a contract upgrade maybe. So that's the basic idea of the Oasis privacy layer. All right, so here we have the secret ballot demo. So what we're going to see in this secret ballot demo is a DAO that's on Binance Smart Chain testnet. And the ballot box is going to be on Oasis Sapphire. So what's going to happen is the votes are going to be collected privately on Oasis Sapphire using the Oasis privacy layer. And then only after voting has completed will the final result be sent back to Binance Smart Chain testnet. The votes will not be revealed. But in actually, in this case, they will because, like, let's say you want transparency for after voting has been done. So what you're trying to avoid here is mainly the first mover advantage, like when the first person to votes, then everyone else follows. So voting will be made public after this uh, poll has been completed, and like that's just like one, actually three lines of code difference. So you don't have to like think too hard. You just like write solidity. This is like a literally require statement. Like, is voting done? Like, if yes, then return the actual vote. So you can program literally whatever you can think of into these things. Like, the privacy is fully up to you as the developer. Okay. So this is a live demo. If you actually head to this, you could vote too, if you could somehow figure out how to get the voting token. But anyway, let's just begin. So we're going to figure out which winter sport is the best. And because we're in Denver and we want to, I mean, it's like a hot topic. So the first thing we're going to do is push the vote weight. So what this means is... I have my voting, my DAO voting token on Binance Smart Chain testnet, and I need to tell the Sapphire side like, that I can vote. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to send a message over the message passing bridge to Oasis Sapphire. Push vote, wait. And then I'll be able to vote. So this is actually going to go away pretty soon because we have this new zero knowledge um, to bridge that will just allow you to push this data directly. It's like read-only. There's no reason to submit a transaction. That's just, just how it is. All right, so what's happening right now is the transaction's been submitted to Binance Smart Chain testnet to push the vote weight over. This is going to invoke the message passing bridge. We're going to see the results over here in this, on the Sapphire side as a log very shortly. All right, so the vote weight has been pushed. We'll see how that looks. So the transaction has um, popped up on the, the, the DAO side. All right, and now we're going to vote. So, and so the choices are skiing, snowboarding, and neither I prefer the beach. And because I came here from Miami and I'm not interested in this cold weather, I say neither. But you may, you may have different opinions. That's okay. All right. So I'm going to submit this transaction now to the Sapphire testnet. So it's going to be sending. And we should see the transaction pop up um, over here. Okay, great. So the voting has completed. Now what's going to happen, the voting has actually closed because I was, I, the termination conditions have been met. Like I'm voting with a huge amount of quorum. So what's going to happen now is that the message is going to go back over the bridge saying this vote has been closed. Please record the final result. The data is actually completely private. So over here, we have the transaction that we just submitted to Sapphire. This was the voting transaction. So let's look into it. So the beauty of Oasis Sapphire is that you, we're just doing like this trickery so that we pack encrypted data into the transaction field so that the MetaMask and stuff continue to work. They don't actually look at this data field. So I'm going to go into CyberChef and decode what's in this transaction. So normally when you're submitting Solidity transaction, it's just like ABI encoded data. So in this case, it's actually this Cbor struct that's been packed into the data field and it contains the encrypted data. Um, the public key, so that we can do uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange, so it's end-to-end -end encrypted. And then the actual encrypted data, as well as the um, nonce for, um, for security. Okay, so that's, a, that's how you can see that the data on Sapphire is end-to-end uh, -end encrypted and how you get confidentiality. All right, so the, the bridge has finished its action, and it's come back. And you can see on the logs that the bridge has sent back the event. Unfortunately, the internet sucks. So here we are. Which winter sport is the best? And the outcome is I prefer the beach. Sorry, guys. All right, so here's, the here's what the bridge does. So it's coming from the bridge, and then you have that option two was the winner. So that was the beach option. All right, so that's like basically how it works. Pretty cool. Well, I mean, if you ask me, but like maybe I, mean, I built it, so of course I like it. All right, so here's the way that the Oasis privacy layer works. So you simply import the Oasis privacy layer 
from our Oasis Privacy Layer contract, and then you say contract DAO is host. This is the host application, so you can consider Enclave host. This is the host, and all you have to do to set this up is in the constructor, pass in the address of the Enclave side contract on Sapphire, and then call this method called register endpoint. So it takes a string, that's the name of the endpoint, and the callback function. So it's just like JavaScript. So this one in particular is the ballot close callback, and it's going to be executed to like record the results of the poll, right? So over here we have opal ballot close. This is an internal function, and all it does is decode the arguments. Um, the library itself checks the security, the sender, um, and makes sure all like the the context is correct. But then all you have to do is decode the arguments and like basically do the thing. So the only extra lines that you're doing due to like the Oasis privacy layer are like this function, the definition, the decoding, and returning the results. So like three extra lines of code. All right, so now let's look at the other side. On the other side, we have the ballot box, and it's going to be basically the same thing. So the interface between these two is this post message interface. We're going to be posting messages back and forth. So again, we register our endpoints, and these are coming from the host, and the host is going to be doing post message. So one, the ballot closed. If you recall, when I was executing the ballot, I voted. The ballot has reached determination conditions, so it closes. So if the Sapphire side is going to post a message calling ballot, called ballot closed back over the bridge to the host side. So all you need to do is this extra one line of code saying ballot closed, and then you ABI encode the arguments, and then it sends it over. So again, another like three lines of code to add confidentiality to your DAP. Pretty nice. So what you're not seeing here is like all of the um, the checking, the network switching, and and like gas relayer context stuff, all done by the library. So it has like first class support for gas relaying, first class support for like ERC two seven seven one context, and um, also if you want to run this locally, you just need to put in this thing called auto switch. So you do auto switch BSC. So if you deploy locally, it does use like the local bridge. If you deploy to a test net. It uses the test and Sapphire test set. If you deploy to mainnet, then it uses the uh, mainnet. So it's actually super convenient for developers to use. All right. So that's like basically the uh, Oasis privacy layer in a nutshell. And then if, in terms of like just getting this into your DAP, it's just you just need to figure out how to split your DAP into like the public part and the private part. And that's just the hardest part. And like the, the syntax for it is super easy. So you just need to think about how it's done. And of course, we also have these um, the web, the hackathons, the docs, and the grants program. So we can very gladly assist you getting these things done because we really want web free users to have privacy. Like it's a fundamental right. And that's what we're just trying to make happen through the convenience of the Oasis privacy layer.